Carl tonight. Let's go to Fremantle Oval with Ross Lyon. G'day, Roscoe. Hello, Brad. Carl, how are you? Good, mate. Yeah, good, good and bad on the weekend. Uh, got out of the yeah. ground just before half time, but uh, nice fight back in the second half. Yeah, we first quarter was um, 13 entries all, but our intensity, our ability to find them and put some pressure on was down, and we didn't score that well, and they took their opportunities. And then second quarter continued the trend, and they dominated really um, 20 entries, and we just. Um, didn't find them that well and then we regrouped at half time and come out and played some super football really and that's how we want to play for four quarters so if I go to glass half full um, show what we're capable of and once we get organised and we compete fiercely and, and that's the level we want to demand of each other so I think it was 42 to 17 entries after half time which is really a domination really but just didn't have enough composure or class to take the opportunities to get the points because when you come from behind, you have to do everything right, you know. You you won the contested footy, though, didn't you, overall? Oh, game? I think it was maybe pretty easy. It was such a contrast, to, to be frank, you know. So, you know, not really overall, I don't think. Well, why do you reckon they were so flat at the start? No, nah, they weren't flat. They started OK, mate, 13 entries each. And, but it was a bit of circle work, you know. It was just the style of footy and... You know, I probably learned some lessons about the group, a few things I asked them to do, so I take responsibility. Um, just simplified it a bit at half time and allowed them to be more instinctive and, and reflected the way we trained all summer. So certainly I'm a part of it and a big part of it and and ultimately the buck stops with me. So look, they're a really good group and, and we'll learn from it. I'm still sort of working through everyone's capabilities and, and sort of sifting the chaff from the wheat, so to speak. So look out of it. I think in the end, even though we lost, we'll go forward in a really positive manner. So um, take the responsibility and, and hopefully marshal them in the correct way next week. Yeah, 20-minute 20, 20 mark, second quarter, five goals to three. And you thought, oh, well, they're doing OK. They're not getting scored against. And then bang, 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 and uh, the margin was out. But you lost Duffield. I thought Duffield was outstanding in the first half. I think he just the way he read the ball, he got back, he covered from uh, kick-ins, and he covered on the goal line to, you know, to save a few things. What happened to him? Did he do some ribs or something? Or Yeah, yeah, he sort of copped the knock in the ribs, and um, Mellington had been corked up, so I, was, I, was, I saw the game slipping. So yep. as he did the ribs, um, I subbed Barlow on for Mellington, and they did say, I said, look, he's cooked anyway, Joshy. So took the part, and we thought he'd be all right, but his ribs... They took him to the hospital just, you know, sometimes you punch it along or whatever. But he's come out in pretty good nick. He's a chance for this week, but unlikely, even though the scans are relatively clear, you know. So he's pretty sore. But, um, you know, you've got to see how he is. So, look, he was one of our better players. And maybe it did coincide. You're right, not from 18, last 12 minutes, they banged on four quick goals. So, um, you know, we just got to work to sort of halt that one momentum. From- one from Phil here, mate. Mickey Barlow will surely play in the 18 this week. He would have won. Uh, he reckons you would have won if you had to play a full game. Yeah, well, we're all geniuses, aren't we? When <laughs> so we've got to manage his leg and he's come back from a significant injury. And at the end of the day, you can throw them to the wolves or you can build them and and handle them. So they're there for the long haul. And look, we've been conservative with Michael, and there's been a really good reason for that because you know he's had some his fair share of adversity. So, look, he showed what he's capable No one wants Mick in more than us, you know. So, so you will um, play in this but, week? Well, we'll sit down and the conditioners and the doctors, um, excuse me, sorry about that, um, will um, have final say. But, look, we think he's pretty much ready to go. So, yeah, that's the aim. Monday? Yeah, um, David? Yeah. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. been knocking on your door. <laughs> Ross! There he is again. Um, well, we're really keen to play him and, you know, we've been flogging him on the track and, and getting him ready. So, yeah, you'd think he, he's under strong consideration for this week, you know. So. And Morabito got reported, mate. We'll find out his fate uh, probably. Did he get reported? He did for, no, tri- he did a for tripping. He, he did a grade <laughs> one um, hamstring, he got, so he'll, he got, he'll miss he two repo- weeks. He got reported. I oh, don't think he'll have to worry about it now, will he? He did do a hamstring. Yeah, he just did a oh, really, really minor one. He, he'll play in the third week, so. 14 days of management, then full train and play. So, look, um, after 65 weeks of complications, he's probably going. Yeah. And he's in really good form, so he's building. And, look, it's only a really minor hiccup. But, um, yeah, he, he'll um, have that little spell. But, you know, won't interrupt him too much. Have you got the address of the AFL interchange, Stuart, so you can send him birthday and Christmas cards? Well, I don't know. I think it's just even the ledger. I think 15 <laughs> to 27, you know, in a 
you know, I think it just brought a little, I think we're still down on the ledger, but that's okay. Yeah, you know, I thought I thought it was a pretty good uh, pretty good game to be honest. And I and, and look in. Uh, I think you've got a lot to like about it. And I think you did find out a, bit, a little bit about some of your players too. And uh, as you say, as you're pushing forward, um, you'll be able to make the ultimate decisions whether you go forward with those players or not. Yeah, it's a really... Look, we've got some selection pressure coming, as you said, with David. Mundy and Grover played in the twos and the Griffin. And, you know, robert has been BAG for a few. So, you know, and there's Van Burl on pit. They're just trying to sort out... Um, and Nick Lowe was coming back from that long suspension. So... And Ballantyne. So there's a bit, I'm just, you know, working through the group and it takes a little bit of time. And, but I've got to compliment them on everything they've asked to do. And as I said, I, I probably complicated a little bit early for them and probably lost a bit of momentum. But out of the loss, we, we go forward with a bit of confidence knowing that our best is pretty good. But I've got to help them to be able to deliver that more consistently. Ross, one thing that Stephen Hill has struggled with is close attention. And uh, when he gets someone planted on him, he just seems to go into his shell a little bit. Is that something that you're aware of? Oh, not for I thought he worked through it super in the end. I mm. mean, he was quiet in the first half, but he had a few mates. and But that was our fault and my fault in particular. I didn't use him that well. And once I put him inside the game and let him get to work rather than just sitting him, you know, he sat in space a bit and he was a sitting duck. So I worked him inside the game and he really got to work from there. So, no, uh, that's part of the, the issues I'm talking about. That was really my fault and, you know, the midfield coach's fault, not not Stephen. So we learn a lot about that. Do you allow him inside, you know. Do you allow him to take a bit of initiative, Ross? Because I said that during the call, I said, look, what he's got to do. If I was Stephen yeah. Hill, I'd be getting beside Aaron Sandilands every tap out, every stop play, every mark he takes and just be there with him because it's just on a platter. Yeah, you're right, you know, and that's, yeah, we do let him, but, you know, he's a young player, he's got to have the confidence, you know, me give him enough rope and, and say, so, mate, get to it. I think we've got to block for him a bit and, you know, he's a, he's a special young talent, he's a great worker and you're right, you got to, who can feed you? <laughs> so, yeah. Alan can feed you, so do what fights, he doesn't get under his feet all day, so it's not a bad starting point, but he'll really grow. I was wrapped with his second half and yeah. he was one of the ones that turned again. I thought Luke McFarlane, Yes, when the game needed to have someone stand up, he went back with the flight and made a statement like, we're not going to accept this. So I thought that was fantastic from one of our leaders as well. Uh, and I thought Clancy Pierce finished the game pretty well. I mean, he looked a little lost. He wanted to get the ball on a little bit too quick. I mean, you talk about tempo. I'm sure you do, you do situation training, and if there's nothing to go to, hold on to the ball until something presents itself, etc. But I, I, thought he, I thought he battled manfully after half time and finished the game pretty strongly. Yeah, it was more, not that he had a lot of ball, but it was... Oh, it was your point, Brad. The way he did it, he sort of competed pretty fiercely and ran and worked and really whacked in and, and created some stuff. So I th I think he'll get a great deal of confidence out of that. You know, it might be a little bit of a breakthrough game for him and build that midfield depth for us. Brisbane at home, Jonathan Brown returns. He's a handy player, isn't he? He is so, a handy player. He gets the look, job. he's had a rough run, and you know, but you know, Luke McFarlane and Zach um, Dawson can hopefully handle him, but, you know, they've got Lawnberg and Merritt and Brown potentially up forward and some dangerous smalls, McGrath, Banfield, sort of Rockliffe types, so our defence is going to be a handful. But, um, yeah, Jonathan, look, he's a superstar, isn't he? Hell, and we know he comes to hand pretty quick, so um, we, we want to pay him a fair bit of attention. Good on you, Ross. Thanks for your time. Good luck against the Lions this week. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, I hope it'll be better. That's Ross. the aim. That's Cheers. the uh, stuff. <laughs> Ross Lyon. Uh, I think the, I think Brown can kick fifteen goals this week, and I think Fremantle will still win. Bury.